Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for the Red Bud National 450 action coming up here live on Star Your Systems TV. We've got the 450 Kazi on the track right now. My name is Calum Brower, joined by the one, the only, Chris Riesenberg. Chris, what's going on tonight, man? How you doing? Oh, I'm just laughing a little bit because I think this might be the first time we've ever had a race leader in the stream with us while he's leading the race hey. as Wheels leads his concierge around and he is chilling with us. Yeah, how's how's the oh, one and no. only Michael Wheeler oh. doing? Oh, he's not doing so well right now. He currently has two broken legs, apparently. <laughs> right, we're, right. also, we're also joined by our pit reporter, Eli Block, who just came hot off the presses in the 250 class, his first 250 pro race. So we'll hear from Block as well. How are you doing tonight, Eli? Uh, pretty decent. How about you? Oh, fantastic. It's Redbud. But Wheels is on the ground, and I'm very disappointed <laughs> as Jack right. Fowler takes over the lead. Josh Williams is in second. Michael Gracci is in third. Michael Wheeler is in fourth. You, all you have to do is beat Justin Harper, Wheels. You got this. Harper riding the two-stroke puts himself at a disadvantage. He's probably preparing for Southwick. I think we didn't we see him running top ten at Southwick on the two stroke last year, Colin. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he yeah. definitely was uh, running up front, making that two stroke look a lot prettier than I made it look at Unadilla last year. I well, mean, let's uh, let's set this up with the look at the point standings again, courtesy of our friend Mr. Devin Davis for updating them manually. So they are unofficial, but I'm trusting Devin's math here, and holding the red plate. Defending champion Jesse Mullins comes in with 228 points. The reason that's important, second place, 190 points. Tyson Fresquez, yep, that's a 38-point lead at the halfway point of the series. Adam Holm, maybe the surprise of the series, sits third in point standings, 164 points. A long ways out of the title, but still running third is strong. Another Volcom rider, James Armstrong, runs in fourth, not far off of him. And top five in points, relax the tires. Jack Haley and checking out the qualifying times here from Redbud there is some superhuman stuff going on at the front 205.2 lap time from Jessica Mullins <laughs> Tyson, <laughs> Tyson Frescas 2060 Ryder Rob that's Kyle Rob 206.7 lap time all right, now you heard that, 205s and 206. Next fastest, Adam Holm, 208. Everyone else, 209 or above. And Holm ran that lap time late for a long time this week. Those guys were in the 206s. The next fastest guy back and forth, 209s. Three-second gap in lap times. We never see that, but that shows the superhuman guys. We had Bryce Wheel in a top five qualifying time with his teammate, Race Carlin, on the versus PC fam and Mexican team. Sixth fastest qualifier, Fjeldberg, ripping on Redbud talked to him earlier today he was unsure if he's gonna be able to race obviously the time zone is rough for fieldberg i'm praying he's gonna line up because the jumps on this track in fieldberg well they go together like peanut butter and jelly and we will see some whips of ridiculousness for sure would you would you call that peanut butter and for jelly <laughs> yeah, <that would> <laughs> come on with the pun. come on there's michael wheeler Hashtag makes the move <laughs> That was freaking sweet. That bud. might be the first ever official pun from a person in a transfer spot we've ever had on the stream as well. I'm just transfer the ground. That's all. Podium spot, top three. I don't care if it's Kansi. He's going to the podium. <laughs> Let's make it a transfer spot, Wheels. Let's have you jump across the track somewhere. Let's see it, <laughs> Kevin Windham. Across the track. Transfer. Oh, Paid okay. up transfer spot. All right, here we go. No, I don't got it. <laughs> oh, backs out of it. Hey, right now it's, it's Jack Fowler leading this thing from Josh Williams on Team Really Bad. And Michael Wheeler home down the third spot. He's got half a lap of practice dedicated to this track coming into this one, folks. Currently have more laps on the track in this race than I did before it. Yeah, no big deal. Just yeah, relying on natural talent. We got a battle for the final transfer spot possibly brewing here between Justin Harper and Michael Garachi. Fierce action. Five riders. Only four of them go to the show. Only one guy going to be super bummed out. No rage quits yet. That's good. I did actually search up um, what 
Justin Herbert did at Southwick. He had a 15th and a 19th on a 252 stroke. Okay, so he scored points for at Southwick on a two stroke. So I know he's looking forward to next week. I know I am. We'll get out the paddle tires and head to the sand track. Can't wait for both for both of them. It'd be a good bit of fun. I'm curious to see this year, since I know that a lot of people know about the paddle tires in game, if anybody actually runs them on Southwick. Because I'm 90% sure I actually have them. If you download them, I'll try them. <laughs> that could be a major distraction. All the roofs that it kicks up. <laughs> be tough. <laughs> Bring the tear offs for your monitor. Oh, Wheels is down. Is that going to give up the transfer spot? I don't think so. He's got a pretty good gap. Back to Justin Harper. I mean, this new bike is sick. I just wanted to look at the side of it. <laughs> a little bit of patriotism coming out for the 4th of July holiday here at Redbud. There's nothing more American than Redbud, right? I mean, that is America, right? America. I mean, it's on 4th of July weekend. There's a ton of just absolutely plastered Americans at this event. Dirt bike racing. Dirt bikes no and beer. On. A lot and of beer. Nate Zaworski. <laughs> and Nate Zaworski, yeah. Although you know what more he American than that. He'll <laughs> be pretty drunk there, I'm sure. In his brand new truck. Yeah. All wheels, watch I out. You got a wild two stroke behind you. Epic red right. bud oh, memories. Oh, what? How oh. Did that happen? Good thing Michael hey. Garachi is down, so wheels will be solid still in a transfer. Because at least you got a pillow to lay your head on. Yeah, nice pillow of hay. Wheels, do we need to Bob. do we need to urge you on with some winter indoor rider intros? Ooh. <laughs> Hailing out of the Pacific Northwest. When he's not busy coding race factory gaming, he's busy banning people. Or working on his dad bod. It's the number one seventy five of Michael Wheeler. Hailing out of somewhere in the middle of the United States. He's number 7-Eleven on the track, but he's never been to one in real life. He's been in the band court twice this year, but he rips a two-stroke, so it's okay. It's the number 7-Eleven of Justin Harper. Dick Dog's brother. Might as well throw mine up in here, Larry Longdart. <laughs> Laying on the ground at the base of the finish line jump, probably from Italy, lagging out like a Brazilian, riding for Team Decal Works, needs a new front tire because he has no traction. It's the 211 of Michael Garacci. I hope he doesn't rage quit because I think I'm actually going to let him buy at the finish. I just wanted to get a nice little race in here. Oh, come on, Wheels. Well, come you can't up. give up like that. <laughs> Judging by his shitty internet connection, the field would be happy if you didn't let him qualify. Yes, please. Leading the way out of somewhere. I have no idea where. Australia. Or New Zealand. Or some <laughs> other fucking country closer to Antarctica than we are. He's really bad on the number 75, Josh Williams. How did he get to the lead? <laughs> uh, he's, from the, he's from the USA. No, he's not. That's right here. No, he's not. Under country. Laying Josh on the Williams. ground, taking a nap after the sand rollers. Riding for Mad Cape. The number 86, that's Flower Power, Jack Fowler. Jack Flower. I miss Sween. Dude, what is up with Garachi's front wheel? He's seriously washing out everywhere. Like, just pushing the front end like a freaking snowplow out there. He doesn't have any Michelins on that thing, that's why. Ooh. Hey, number 75 won the race, Wheels. That used to be oh, you. Oh, yeah, that used to be me. Are we going to see a big whip over the leap, at least? We better I'll, see this. I'll try to give you something. Oh, come on, Wheels. Well, first, let's see if Harper can make it on the two-banger. Just go into the Railing motos wheels. The outside. You're gonna take an hour out of the day just to wait for Garachi to come around you. <laughs> Harper's dead on the leap. Let's see it. Oh, a we double top saw double us. whip. Oh, it's the number three ride. 
do it. The number seven, 175 on Michael Wheeler. He's battling Hartford to the line. Who's going to get the spot? It's bar to bar around just the last stay, turn. Stay. Oh, Wheeler and Wheels gives up. I can't do that. He can. <laughs> He's probably here to actually race the moto, so. Recent rage quitter. <laughs> yeah. Watch Garachi rage quit because he thinks that he's not going to be able to get the spot. Are you going right, to go Garachi, take him out? You have to whip the lead. No, I'm not going to take him out, Kellen. What are you talking about? <laughs> I think you're going to take him out. No, I'm going to go race him. Oh, man. Wheels is going to take him out. All right, if I can beat him from here, might just do it. You're in front. Oh, I'm short. I'm short. Oh. oh. That was Byron. Oh, the puns. <laughs> He's hitting him in the low areas. Oh wait, you can't go much lower than that though. Oh, damn. All right, and waiting for the 175 to come across the finish line after blowing a last transfer in the last turn. It's Michael Wheeler. Hey, are you, you happy with that transfer? No. Josh wow. Williams with a solid boner here. Are we going to do keys to the race for the 450 class? Because I don't really have anything. I don't know if you want to give me keys to the race. I haven't even figured out a versus PC one to watch yet, man. All right. Well, the keys to the race brought to you by the fine folks at Tagger Designs. I got the first key. It is key. going to be, be brought to you from race. Michael Wheeler. <laughs> All right. And then you got to get a good start and don't crash. Are Those are the down. keys to the race brought to you by Tagger Designs. And you have to hit the... Triple and throw some style off. There. All right, guys, have fun racing. I'm out. Night wheels. Bye bye, Buddy Michael Wheeler. From your channel. All right, we got a line up check going down. Oh man! If you don't have one, I do. Well, then give me yours, cause I I definitely don't have one. Our versus PC.com one to watch will be the number 61 of Kevin from Zaka. It was either going to be him or Wheelin. And, well, I'm hoping we'll see Wheelin at the front of the field after his great qualifying effort. So let's see Kevin for Zaka because I know he throws some dirty style and it is Red Bud. Okay, where's. You know who else we didn't mention actually in qualifying times that had a great race last week? Chase Blakely. That's a good I'm point. To go yeah. Look and see where he qualified at. Won the overall Coming last week. A win. He was 11th fastest qualifier. Uh, actually, right in front of our versus PC.com. One to watch Kevin Ferzaka. Hmm. And if you want to, you can go back to P23 right now. Just for the fans. P23. Michael Garacci? No. Dennis oh, he's here. Oh, there he is. All right, Dennis, what do you got for us? I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> it's just the warm-up lap. He's just getting warmed up. He's probably waking up right now. <laughs> it's true, though. I mean, he does set an alarm to race these events. It's about, if I could guess, about exactly 4 a.m. right now in Norway. Norway? No, 5 a.m., actually. All right, we're about to go racing, so we'll keep an eye on Kevin Frazaka as our versus PC.com one to watch. And on the gate, let's see who's in the middle. Kellen, who do you want to watch? Uh, let's take a look. Why not take a look at Fjellberg off the gate here? It's right in the middle of the inside gate. Someone just hopped the gate. Do we have a red flag situation? No, we don't. Someone hopped the gate on the outside, so they're going to miss out. Brandon Holt. Time to go. 450 no. racing. It's Red Bud. Suzuki. Roy Mitchell out to the lead. He's going to miss all the inside ruts, go wide, and it's going to get cut off by Dago Adamo wow. into the lead, running the wrong number, I believe. Yeah, well, maybe that's... Hunter Deicher no. up in the mix. Alex Heckman. Tyler Fry. There's Fresquez. Demos. <laughs> Kyle Robb was ripping this track during qualifying. Oh, and he's going to be in about eighth. He's right behind Fresca. As that was Dicer down. Yeah. Where is Ad Jessica Mullins? Adamo is running the incorrect number because it's Honeywell's number, but he is leading this thing from Roy Mitchell and Alex Heckman early on. Tyler Fry up front, Bryce Whelan. We got an interesting mix of guys at the front. 
Mullins is down in the off camber. He was in the 11 spot and losing spots like cray cray. He okay, is getting he, up and going in 23rd. Take it easy, Taylor Swift. Oh my gosh, he's down again with the 481 machine of Nicholas Crush and the locomotive Peter Like. Adamo Crush. Oh uh, my gosh, Mullins just got knocked down again. Wow, Mullins having a he's disaster. He's laying on the ground. 39th place. The only rider behind him, Mr. Triangles himself, Josh Mertens. Meanwhile, Murrah committed up at the front. Alex Heckman goes to the lead, and somewhere in this chat room, uh, a bunch of YouTube fans are about to get lit in here as Heckman wow, leads from Wow, and there's Wheeling. literally fireworks going off in my neighborhood to celebrate America going into the number one ride. <laughs> Heck yeah. I was going to say that because Roy Mitchell, who is also American... But uh, has lived in Cor oh, South Wheeling Korea for a long time. Into the lead. Was right up there in the lead, but crashed out as Whelan does go to the race lead. Adamo is trying to fight oh, back. Whip. Adamo from the far inside gets a triple with ease. How about Tyson Fresquez? He is up here in the four spot as Mullins is buried in the back. The general race, Carlin, forgot to run some red, white, and blue gear here for America. Are you sure he forgot? Oh, I guarantee he's not doing it. Fucking running the German colors yellow and red. <laughs> Greater. Are you sure he didn't forget? Nope. I don't think he forgot. I think he's running the German colors. Yeah. Protesting. He is riding the Merca bike, though. <laughs> and he's bike humping. So clearly he's saying, yes, I'm freaking rock, rock, repping Germany. <laughs> Yeah, he gets around uh, Tyler Fry right there on the 292. Eduardo Simos, we got a couple of uh, South Americans up here. Simos out of Brazil, Dago Adamo out of Argentina, right in front of Tyson Fresquez. Give a call to Logan Leitzel running up in the number nine spot. A good moto going for the TMFR rider early in this race. Logan yeah. Higney, the event host and system decal, rounded out the top ten. What a weird mix going on at the front. Still waiting to see how Mullins is going to work his way through the field from that disaster of a start as Roy Mitchell makes a nice recovery inside of the top 10 to get around Higney. Mullins 26th right now, so he is working his way through. Riders, and we know he's really good at using different lines around the racetrack, so we'll see. There's a lot of good lines on this track that are really pretty even as something I was hearing throughout the week. So he should be able to use alternate lines as he's blowing by guys two and three at a time as he just worked his way around Devin Davis up to the 23rd spot. Ooh, is that, that was, Fresquez was down before the sand. I was just talking, about to talk about how wow. Heckman was down. Heckman Somehow battling out with up Kyle to second, Robb. And now, ooh, Carlin almost went down. Carlin around Adamo. Then we got this battle between Fry and Heckman. Heckman sees an opening on the inside. He's got a little bit of a run. Is he going to run it deep on Fry? Fry going to leave the door just, open yeah. for him. Well, Heckman, that's a good recovery so far. Heckman crashed back behind both of these two and has now gotten them both back. And oh, throws by Heckman. sauce on the triple. And, oh, Adamo is down. Clips Kyle Robb with his feet. Robb is, I'm going to say, the guy to probably keep an eye on, along with Fresquez. They're in fifth and sixth right now. And they were two of the guys running those superhuman lap times in qualifying but right now it's all about versus pc fam and max rider bryce whelan and his teammate the general race carlin running in one and two heckman holding down third yeah the front two have gotten Rob away all a over lot. fry at least the race leader has actually gotten away quite a bit Rob going to try to go around the outside here. Fry misses the run, almost bounces into him. I think Rob might have the run on him. Oh, throws the whip right at him. Actually tucked his wheel back in to not take him out. Clean racing there from Kyle Rob. Briska is coming into this mix from behind in six right now as we got about a four rider battle going. Briska is trying to get around to his teammate, Tyler Fry. See if Fry makes it easy on him. Doesn't look like he's given an inch yet. Causing Fresquez to go to wide there, maybe, time. and let him go by. I think he did let him go by there. He's trying to without losing, obviously, a ton of time on his own. Fresquez is very respectable, giving him the lines. 
you guys definitely racing each other clean maybe too clean honestly they're losing touch with Kyle Robb in a ridiculous way Kyle Robin, Robb is Heckman. going to the front he's yeah. going to the inside before the rollers on Heckman Heckman's got to drive gonna though. make that line work I think he First is. First time all night. We've seen it get used. To, it works for Kyle Robb. Although Heckman down the inside pulls it back alongside, and they almost do, almost do duallys. Kyle is going to make the pass, but Heckman comes right back again, has to check up to not collide as the lines came together a little bit. Now Kyle Robb going to go after his buddy, Race Carlin. Up wheeling across the line lead. 11 seconds out front yeah wheeling stretching this thing out early looking at the map and he had a big lead going update on mullins up to 15th place already so he's moving forward he's got a massive points lead yeah this is really one of those motos that fresquez needs to win as Mullins is likely going to make a lot of prog <clears throat> progress through the field, excuse me. Interestingly enough, Whelan, this, early this week, asked me if I had a two-stroke that he could ride because he was just going to start ripping the 125 for the rest of the year and having fun. Ends up here on the 450, leading the moto, had a good qualifying time. And I think this 450 class is where we should see Bryce Whelan. He did so well on it in super, at the end of the Supercross season. And he can run the pace. It just takes him, I think, the time he has to put in. He also, he's also protesting America. Maybe did oh, he's down in the turn. He's going to get up at the lead. He had a massive lead built up. But Kyle Robb into the number two spot is not the guy you want behind you the way he's been riding Redbud all week long. Yeah, talking a little bit about Whelan and his uh, strength on the 450 this year. He's likely been the most diverse rider we've seen this year, having won a 250 Supercross and uh, finishing on the podium in the 450 Supercross as well, if I'm not mistaken. So he knows how to do it well in both classes, but obviously has the power down in this 450 class going right now. Carlin trying to latch on to Mr. Newt Newt, Kyle Robb. Oh, my game is freaking out. Whoa. Hopefully that fixes itself. Brady Stanley's moved up into the seven spot. First time we've seen him in the top ten thus far in the race. As Leitzel and Haley. Haley, of course, that great moto last week. At Muddy Creek, side by side with Leitzel down the sand rollers. They're going to split lines in the turn. Leitzel gets a good drive out of that inside. They're going to continue to race side by side. And Leitzel going to go around the outside here. Haley going to try to tuck in. I think Leitzel has the spot for now. Going to reconnect real quick. My game just had a momentary freak out. That's all right. We're just watching guys go six corners in a row side by side. Jack Haley and Logan Leitzel as they go <sighs> over the leap. And Eduardo Simo says, I want to get in on this mix. There's three wide before the finish right now battling over that eighth spot. Haley has it for now over Leitzel as they single file tuck in line over the finish. Uh, Simo's going to pull up alongside now. There we go. Now we're back. Talking about how diverse Bryce Whelan is for Supercross, he won 250, won 250 race, a 450 race, and won the championship for the 125 series. Incredible. Definitely a ripper on the versus PC Fam MX team, known for his Stanley Steamer hot laps, and right now trying to make a name for himself as a 450 Moto winner. But it's not going to be easy because he has Kyle Robb. Trying to run him down, who is another diverse rider, I guess you could say. Spending times often on a 125. Rode the 250 class at some rounds this year where he was battling for wins and doing the same here on the 450. Eli, your mic is AIDS right now. Sorry. All right, so things have settled in just a little bit. Tyler Fry almost coming together with... Lap. No, that is Brady Stanley. I thought maybe he was a lap down already, but seemed weird. Ooh. So there he is. Fry doing a little enduro crossing over the hay bale. No harm, no foul. Fry has been having a great series this outdoor season. He'll be definitely dropping that three-digit number as we head into the 2018 season. Indeed he will. 
Chase Blakely showing his face inside the top 10. Last week's winner is going to launch himself, oh, tightly around Logan Leitzel. Didn't give him any working room. And then right behind those guys, we find our VersusPC.com one to watch. Kevin Ferzaka, teammates, of course, with Blakely. A lot more lines being used here by the 450 guys. 250 guys weren't mixing it up on the track nearly as much. Makes me happy. I believe we may have just had a race Carlin fall out of second as he is now in third and under attack from Tyson Fresquez. Uh, no, nah, actually it wasn't a fall. It's just been developing over time. Kyle moved by oh. him a lap and a half ago before your computer started to go crazy. Oh. And Fresquez has just been inching away at that gap. Ran a 2.11 last time by to Carlin's 2.14. So that would explain why. That 2.14 is not a bad lap. It's just these guys are incredible. Over the triple, the Race Tech triple. Are we going to see Dooley's? No, Fresquez actually Whoa. almost hit the pole. Cross jump Carl on Mr. Carlin. I think he did that for America since Carlin's freaking <laughs> protesting. Well, if Fresquez isn't necessarily running the most patriotic colors either. Yeah, well, I mean, and then we got our leader, Bryce Wheel, and probably doesn't even know that we have America bikes. <laughs> We're just <laughs> running the normal versus PC Fam X setup. Oh, man. It's all good. Heckman, good ride going in fifth for him thus far. All good in the hood. And Heckman, speaking of America, loving that setup. Nice setup this week for sure for the Vital MX Honda guys. Brady Stanley, Tyler Fry, Jack Haley, Kevin Frazaka, Logan Leitzel. And the first sign we have seen of Jesse Mullins now creeping up behind this top 10 battle. 210.3 last time around. So he's showing the speed that we know. And I mean, we're not even halfway through this thing and he's creeping on the top 10. So. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be long before he's around Leitzel either. He's making up chunks of seconds in each segment of the track we go through. Yeah, now that things are spread out, let's watch a little bit of Jesse Mullins into the sand using that inside line, carrying a lot of speed. Oh my gosh, he just blows around him through that inside. He made up so much time. Riding for Garweasel Racing again this <laughs> week. Jesse Mullins, of course, one of the Prime Designs riders. Chooses the uh, middle inside rut. Get the drive for the moto Drubs option. The leap. Wow. leap. This is Looks just smooth. I love going on board with these guys sometimes and just watching. 2104. <laughs> he's laying the laps down. He's, he's going to try to get up on our versus PC.com. One to watch. BPC Husk Barn Rider. Kevin Frazaka making a mistake. So that's going to allow Mullins to close on him extremely fast. He's just so smooth in and out of these corners. I'm in a little bit of disbelief watching Mullins right now, just how smooth he is through the corners. Yeah, he's just hitting all of his marks so well. We talked a little bit during the 250 broadcast about it. Some guys, duelies! Yeah. Not loving the track necessarily. Mullins was one of the guys that absolutely was stoked on it. They're closing on Tyler Fry now as well. Mullins gets a little swap, but he's going to use this inside. Is he going to make the move? Ooh, a little swap coming out as well. Not going to quite make the pass yet. Goes around the outside for Zaka, goes down. Going to give up the spot to Mullins. Now Mullins working on Tyler Fry. Yeah, I'm going to finish watching a whole lap on board with Mullins to the uh, finish line, see what this lap time is, because it's just incredible to watch the speed that he's working through the field. I mean, we just reached the halfway mark, and wow, he makes he a pass for eight. by Tyler Fry like he's on a freaking cooldown lap. As I just saw in chat, Devin Davis saying what's up, meaning he is out of the moto. So hopefully a better moto two for Devin Davis. I think we saw that last week, a terrible moto one for him, and he bounced back in moto two with a much better performance. Man, Mullins literally going through those sand rollers like they're super cross whoops, just right across the top of them, skimming them perfectly, gaining so much time in the process. Fresquez has moved around Race Carlin up into the number three spot. He's 
finishing watching this lap with Mullins real quick as he approaches the leap. Already chunking oh, away time at our seven. Our leader's down. So we're going to have a new leader. Kyle Robb passes up Bryce Whelan over the red bud table. Or triple, sorry. 2091. Race tech triple, sorry. 2090 for Kyle Robb as the fast lap, by the way, as he is our new leader into the uh, Tagger Designs turn. <clears throat> 2091 in traffic for Jesse Mullins. I mean, that is insane. Obviously, Rob working through some lappers already here, but Mullins might be on another level of this round. So Rob now into the lead, wheeling into second. Fresca has small bobble oh, there. Oh, Rob's down. Gets collided with the locomotive in Fjeldberg, and now Whelan is side by side. Rob Boner airs it as Whelan gets saucy, and they're going to come into the corner side by side. Whelan crosses back to the inside. Oh, Rob's Rob down. down again and off the bike. Fjeldberg off the bike on the inside, so nowhere to go for anybody here. here as someone Fresca's. 751, I don't know who that is, but he just did the sickest barrel roll into the corner. Rob trying to get his momentum through these sand rollers. Not as bad as the 250, but you do lose a lot of momentum. Lapped rider is a huge problem here in the 450 class. Of course, we saw that Constellation race was very thin, meaning some guys that are pretty far off the pace are able to get into the race. And we're seeing lappers early in the moto as we're just past the halfway point. And I guess it's probably time for that top 10 rundown brought to you by the fine folks at Ride365.com. If you haven't been there, go check them out and buy something, will you? Leading the way, Bryce Whelan versus PC Fam MX rider, number 67. Second place, Kyle Robb, Mr. Newt Newt himself, riding for Prime Design Graphics. Tyson Fresquez, Team Volcom, rides in third. In fourth, we find System Decal Rider, the 22. Deuce Deuce of Brady Stanley. Race Carlin, the general. Versus PC Fam MX, runs in the number five spot. No, he's got legs off. What's going to happen here? Jack Haley is going to got to go around. Mullins gets collected with Carlin as there was a lapped rider down as well. And Haley there, nowhere to go. So that's going to really mix things up. Fifth place, Jack Haley. Sixth place is Race Carlin. Here comes Alex Heckman, Vital MX Honda. Also riding for Heckman Productions. Kevin Frizaka versus PC. One to watch goes into eighth. And Mullins lost all the way. So he was challenging for fifth. He's back into ninth. Bad news for Gar Weasel Racing rider number one, Jessica Mullins, and Tyler Fry rounds out the top ten. Ride365.com rundown. Blakely and Adam Holm, first we've seen of Holm, run in 11th and 12th. Keep an eye on Holm, see if he can work his way through the field. He's got a 210.7 logged already. Talking a little bit about what well, we mentioned in the 250 class, about guys having mixed reviews on the track this week. Holm was another one that was a little bit outspoken about this track. Uh, saying that he did not like Muddy Creek because of the challenge of it and that he felt that the Race Factor crew was maybe building oh, the track. Oh, Carlin gets taken out by a lapper. So oh, no. Heckman by. Sorry to interrupt you, but Mullins yeah. is going to be able to capitalize as well. And for Zaka's not going to be able to get around Mullins. Mullins had missed the line a little bit through all that carnage. Heckman's down now, so Mullins is going to go by him up into the sixth spot. Great comeback from 39th to 6th. For Zaka runs it in deep, and Mullins goes down trying to close the door. So once again, Mullins all the way to sixth, down, and you're going to lose all those spots right back. And more. He's outside the top ten as he tries to rejoin the race. He's in 12th place now. Frustration could set in for Mullins here as he tries to deal with guys more on his level, although he's not really on the same level as these guys even as he's just been blowing by them. But, you know, not as easy to pass these guys who are obviously a little bit more race savvy, going a, a better pace. He's going to probably get around Fry coming into the corner here, using that inside line. But just trying to get through these guys, having some frustrations. But back to the point I was making about Holm. Didn't like Muddy Creek, didn't like the challenge of it. Um, obviously, it had been fantastic through four rounds this year. Oh, Mullins is down again. Sorry to interrupt you, but he's off the bike. Drops back to the 13th spot with 10 minutes and two laps to go. So, Holm, again, not liking this track this week, but trying to make the best of it. There, you finally got that point out. Sorry. <laughs> 
Blame Mullins for crashing ten times and being the holy battle. Speaking of home, it's Blakely, Carlin, and Holm, eighth, ninth, and tenth, hooked up on the racetrack right now. Yeah, we've been watching this battle a little bit as we've been talking about Holm, seeing Mullins crash here and there. But this battle is a good one. These guys all locked together. Holm might actually be the fastest of the three, although Carlin seems like he's the aggressor on Blakely right now. Up up. Over the race tech yeah. triple try lease. Woo, Carlin! At the same time. Yeah, Carlin almost ate it though. He almost double whipped it. See what happens here in the tagger turn. Carlin's gonna try to work that inside. He's got to run and a lapper to help him out. Maybe uses a pick. The lapper's gonna jump to the outside. Carlin around the middle. <laughs> Blakely around <laughs> the inside. That's Matt Model on the 101. Oh, Carlin and Blakely trilies again. These guys are throwing it. I think Carlin's got to run, but a lap her down, and oh, wow, off the track was Woo! Blakely. <laughs> Blakely comes flying into your living room. And he's going to try to come back on Holm. Holm Makes gave him room. Back. I think Blakely backed out and was going to give Holm the line just as Holm decided to go to the middle line. So Blakely does get that spot back. <laughs> These guys throwing it dirty on every jump right now in a freight train. I love it. Helen not able to pour the shots fast enough, I don't think. I, I, would, I would not be able to for oh, sure. And Blakely oh, Blakely is down. Mullins is right behind that group now. Let's go back on board with Mullins. I mean, he's about to pass like four guys here for sure. While you do that, I'm going to update you on the front of the field. Whelan continues to lead by eight seconds over Kyle Robb, who's got ten seconds over Fresquez. Stanley runs fourth, Haley fifth. Kevin Ferzaka versus PC1 to watch. Sixth, getting up from a crash, is going to have the general race. Carlin, who's at the front of this train that you're watching, Mullins try to catch. Ferzaka is going to be right in front of Carlin. Then Holm and Mullins. Blakely getting up from a tangle with Heckman. And they get together a second time before the finish. Tyler Fry goes by them both. Yeah, so since we've been on board with Mullins, he's made two passes. Ran another 2091. Just doing Jesse Mullins things. Battle Just, from Carlin and for Zach is yeah. really good. If you want to jump off board to yeah, check out I'm the there. battle for the sixth spot. For Zaka throws her dirty. Carlin throws it upside Woo! down as well. Here comes Holm and Mullins. They're all getting saucy. Love it. Carlin's definitely got the bit between his teeth here, though. He's going after for Zaka. He wants to work his way back inside of the top 10 further here. For Zaka's fast lap is a 211 to Carlin, who's down, was a 213. So uh. Holm's going to go by Carlin. Mullen's going to be right on him now, and I'm guessing these two usually in a chat together during the race. Carlin been known to let guys that are faster go by, and he does just that for Jesse Mullins right there. Rider off the track. That's a lapper letting those guys go by. Atta boy. Mullins off the track before the red boat, or not the red boat table, the photo option table. Yep, that's what we're going to call that one. Kyle Robb just went down right before the finish line, and now Tyson Fresquez is not too far behind him, but they have lost a lot of time to your race leader, Bryce Whelan, who is five minutes and a lap and, and a couple laps away from winning this thing, which, if I'm not mistaken, would be his first ever outdoor moto win. Mullins just picks up another that. spot on for Zaka, who made a small mistake. He's up to the seven spot. He's about to go to work on Adam Holm. Oh, and Mullins is down again. Every time he gets by all these guys, he goes down. So for Zaka, Carlin's actually down on the leap. So he's not going to lose that spot, I don't believe, if he can get back going. Back going in eighth this time. Yeah, right in front of Carlin. But lost a lot of time to Frazaka and Holm in that process. Brady Stanley might be under attack here soon from Jack Haley. Got a battle of the uh, 18 Zooks here.
Not a good night for Dennis Fjellberg as I see him there. Going a lap down from these guys. He's running in the oh. 24th spot. Breskis has moved around Rob in the number two spot. They're battling up the Tiger Designs rollers. It's good news for Fresca as he needs as many points away from Mullins as he can get here. So to get more from Rob, who obviously is going to fight back to try to help out his teammate here. Meanwhile, Bryce Whelan clicking off yet another lap, 26 and a half minutes in, probably looking about five min or five laps to go. 19 second lead. Interesting thought about Bryce Whelan. We talked about those great performances at the end of the Supercross season. That was after he moved up. He was battling... Uh, not really in super close contention for a 250 Supercross title. Moved up, took the pressure off, did really well on the 450. Started this championship. Wasn't going well. Jumps here on the 450. Once again, no pressure. Actually, was like I said, talking about riding a two-stroke. Really probably didn't put a lot of focus in on the race itself. Just relaxed a little bit, and look what he's doing. Yeah. It's amazing what just kind of letting the game come to you naturally will do. You can just start flowing, clicking off laps, not thinking about it too much. Wonder if it starts creeping into his mind now, though. Looking at his first ever 450 National Moto win. Obviously has a big gap to work with over Fresquez, but... Up to 24 seconds. Yeah. But no lead is safe with a Fresquez or a Mullins in the number two spot, as we've seen so many times, especially with all the lappers that we've had tonight here at Redbud. Absolutely. In this 450 class. Mullins is uh, back ahead of Frazaka. Solid moto for Heckman. Hovering around the top 10 the entire moto after a really good start. Led for a few corners. So I'm sure he'll be pumped with this one. Closest battle inside of the top 10. Still looks like it's either Fresquez and Rob or perhaps Haley and Holm who are starting to link up a little bit. No real progress yet made into the deep parts of the top 10 from Mullins, who's down again. Another big mistake for Zach is going to go back by. Don't believe Heckman's going to be able to get there in time. It's going to be just enough time for Mullins to get going as Heckman now coming into that corner. Is it just pushing too hard for Mullins? He had another 209.1. So he's consistently running those 209.1s when he's not crashing. But is he pushing too hard to run those lap times? Is that what's causing the crashes, I, you I, think? I don't know because obviously he's capable of running like 206s. So I don't know if it's a matter of pushing too hard. It's just it's just some, it seems like some unlucky situations. Obviously that one was kind of his own mistake. But he did get caught up with a couple lappers earlier and just bad timing, of course. Meanwhile, we've got a good battle brewing here for the four spot. Brady Stanley has a lot of pressure from Jack Haley, and Haley's not too far ahead of Adam Holm either as they hit the leap. Yeah, Holm's the man on the move. He's got much faster lap times than the two guys in front of him. He has clawed his way through the pack a little bit more successfully than Mullins did. Wasn't quite as far back maybe at the in the first lap, but he came from a ways back in this out of the top ten, and he's worked his way up got a run on Haley here he's gonna show him a wheel looks down the inside can't quite make it happen just yet Bling shot that middle line missed some bumps pressures mounting on Stanley who pushes the front end a little bit in that corner man that's a great three rider train though all these guys matching lines Looking for just that little edge to get around each other, but can't seem to find it just yet. Haley's been kind of stalking Stanley for about five laps here. Those guys are both going to use the inside home rail on the outside here in the tagger turn. We are past the 30 minute mark as home oh, oh. down. That gonna kind of, for Zach is a little too far back. Then we find the battle of Carlin and Heckman going on. Ahead of Mullins too, so Mullins must have had oh, another Heckman. mistake. 
Bike safe. That was like a duplicate of the bike Damn. safe going downhill, swapping like crazy on the front end. I just caught it off screen, so I just caught the very end of it. Unfortunately, didn't get it, but yeah, he is right in front of Mullins here. I think at this point in the moto, if Mullins can move his way around these guys, he would probably be pretty okay, I guess, as we should have two to go right now in the moto. Man, this battle's insane. Oh, Heckman. Do oh, Trilies. Trilies. Woo! Oh, man. Hey, I give it to Mullins right there because he saw those guys throwing it in front of him. That wasn't about going fast. That was about having fun as he's I trying know, to I know, look at Mullins trying to rollers. go down the middle. They're going to use all three lines. Three lines. Of the turn. And Carlin, oh, again. oh man, this is <gasps> rad as Carlin tries to throw it back down the inside but thinks better of it as Mullen sweeps around. Heckman doesn't care, man. He's just going for it. He doesn't care who's behind him, who's with him. He's going for it. I Are like it. We're going to see Trilies again on the leap. Here they come. It's going to be at least duallys, right? Oh, oh man. Carlin man. throws it behind him as well. Say is Mullins clearly not that upset about the position. Still, oh, he catches oh. the back end of Heckman and oh. saves it. Oh, wow. Gnarly save. How about Justin Harper just throwing caution to the wind in the middle of this on the oh, two-stroke? Oh, Heckman's down. Harper almost gets into Carlin. Mullins goes on through back up to eighth. Mullins ran a 209 with all that going on, going three wide in the corner after the sand rollers. <laughs> Now uh, Carlin and Heckman are going to link up again and start throwing more duallys. Kyle Robs moved back into the two spot in front of Fresquez. Fresquez needs those points. As Whelan's going to come over the leap and come around, he should be getting the white flag. Yeah, this is just a matter of Fresquez not taking advantage of situations that are given to him here where if he could have just made do with a second at least in this moto, it would have been a lot better for oh, him. Oh, Robs down, so Fresquez is into second. Still he just, needs those points yeah. for sure to take advantage. Mullins doesn't have that many races where he's outside the top five. So when he is, you have to get maximum points when you're that far behind in the championship. Mullins already out to that such a commanding lead. Right. Rob off the bike again. So that probably locks Fresquez into at least second as Haley continues to just stalk Brady Stanley. I mean, he's been on him for the better part of the second half of the moto and just can't quite get close enough to make a pass. Stanley's responded well to the pressure for what it's worth. And the versus PC.com one to watch continues to be a blessing here at Redbud as Kevin Ferzaka runs up inside the top 10 with a seventh right now. He's got nine second gap over Mullins. Can Mullins get all the way up to seventh? Oh, Carlin and Blakely now throwing duallys as they are bar to bar into the new S turn section. Blakely going to make the move the on the Carlin general. coming back down Collins. the inside. Ooh, it was saucy in there. They're going to split lines. If Carlin can scrub up the leap and make the pass back, he tries oh, to throw the oppo for days. Jeez, I thought they were making contact. Oh. Heckman goes down, so Heckman's going to go by him while he's laying down. I and guarantee race is like, worth it. <laughs> <laughs> worth it. Justin Harper is still with these guys as a lapped rider, too. So he's riding well, but just a lap down, unfortunately. Oh, Kyle Robb gets up from another mistaken crash. He's still got a great lead over Stanley. So no worries for losing third for him. But he was definitely struggling these last couple laps. Coming around to the yeah. lead for the last time. We're about to have your guys' first moto win of the year for the Versus PC Fam MX team. How about it? This is a good ride for Bryce Whelan. Nobody really saw this coming, I'm sure, as he front flips the leap, a little a la Matt Burkeen style. But I like it. Br Bryce Whelan comes out of nowhere through the final corner, and he takes moto number one here at Red Boy, the 67 of Bryce Whelan versus PC, Famimex's own. Makes you guys so proud, I'm sure. Says, Tyson made me proud with the whip you just threw over yeah. the leaf. That's pretty beautiful as he comes around to take the number two spot. And he will chip away at that points lead for sure. Kyle Robb coming around here in the third spot. What's he got for us over the leap? Hey, to Nothing. hell to hell with riding a 125 and having fun in this game. It's all about winning 450 motos when you don't think you have it left in you. 
Danley and Haley are going to take this thing all the way to the line. <laughs> they come around to the leap, and they do have lapped riders in front of them. Brady's going to throw a nice little whip out. That was Haley sick. as well gets saucy. That whip from Stanley was awesome. I liked it. It had a really interesting kick to it. But again, like you said, these guys come into the line. Stanley going to hang on for a fourth. His best ride of the season so far as Jack Haley almost gets landed on by, I believe, a oh wild August gosh. Sanders. Mullins just got upside down. He is pushing so hard to try to catch for Zaka here at the end. He ran a 2.08.5 last time around. What's this lap time going to be? He laid the hammer down. 2.05.7. Oh, what? <laughs> Watch what, out what? in moto number two is all I gotta say. What? what? Jesse Mullins has ran a 205.7. Are you kidding me? Chase Blakely is down. But, He's got uh, plenty of yeah. gap over Heckman. Carlin, not too far behind him. Wow. Looks like Heckman gonna round out the top 10 here if he can get through mistake free. Race Carlin over the leap the last time. Rose style once again. Tyler Fry coming around here in the 12 spot. Hey, this is a good ride for Tyler Fry. Not normally we oh, see him finish it out. Yeah, too. I like it. He starts it, up front a lot, but I don't know if we've ever seen him really put together a solid moto, but this is a good one for him here to get, bring it home in 12th. Roy Mitchell, 13th. Here comes Logan Leitzel on the TMFR machine. TMFactory-racing.com. Log on there for everything you could ever imagine to download for Sim, by the way. Yeah, no and that kidding. That was your last rider on the lead lap. Great performance for Leitzel staying here on the lead lap. As he does a, about a 540 there. <laughs> August Sanders would be 15th. James Armstrong, 16th. Hunter Deicher, 17th. Eduardo Simino's 18th. Reed Young, 19th. And Dennis Fieldberg scores a single point for his efforts of getting up ridiculously early in the morning. Jesse, not happy in chat. Interesting. All right. So no cuts in this moto. The 67 of Bryce Whelan is officially your moto number one winner. We're going to send it to a quick commercial break here, so don't touch that URL bar. We'll be right back from the other side of this one for more Ride365.com Nationals, powered by Versus PC from Redbud. RaceFactoryGaming.com would like to thank the following sponsors for their continued support.
Welcome back to Redbud here, Ride365.com Nationals, powered by Versus PC, 450 Moto 1 in the books. My name is Kellen Brower here alongside Chris Riesenberg and our pit reporter Eli Block. All right, Chris, heading into Moto 2, who we got for the Versus PC 1 to watch before this thing gets underway? I'm throwing her to our pit reporter, Mr. Larry Londart. Who do you got? I'm going to choose Alex Heckman. All right, the number 55 Vital MX Heckman production rider, Alex Heckman. Had a solid top 10 in moto number one and threw some dirty whips, so I'm cool with that pick. And he's right in the middle of the gate, actually, so we could pick him P16 to watch on the start. Yeah, I think that's a good idea to watch on the start here as we are set to go. Moto number one winner Bryce Whelan far inside gate. Mullins is third from the inside, but we're watching Alex Heckman as we are set to go. The final race of the night is set to go. It is Red Bud! And how about that start for from for Zaka out of the middle? Oh, Fjeldberg with a good start as well. I see Holm on the 192 and the 196 of Higgs. Logan Higney. For Zaka, yeah, for Zaka leads, but Fjeldberg is giving chase early. Adam Holm is up there with a good start. Fjeldberg throws <laughs> sauce down the hill. I love it. Higgs exit track, exit stage right. Zach Prokop goes up in. Jesse Mullins a much better start. Runs in the five spot over the race tech triple. We go see some whips. Flap number one for Zaka and Fjeldberg. Doolies. Trilies, quadsies. Mullins doesn't do anything, so he's Mullins lame. Goes long. <laughs> Kyle Robb, also a good start. August Sanders, the Colonel. Billy Kunitz just moved up to the A-Class today to ride this 150 <laughs> class. Runs in eighth. Tyson Fresca is in ninth. Oh, man, our superhuman qualifiers are all in the top ten, but you know who we didn't see? Moto number one winner, Bryce Whelan. He is all the way back in the 19 spot. Let's see what Ooh. he can do through the field. That inside gate has not worked out very well tonight, especially in the 250 class. We didn't see it work out the well. Lead. So is that strange, you know, Whelan picking the far left-hand gate did not work out well. It once again ends up 19th now. Actually, off the start, he was in fourth place, but he got taken out uh, past the mechanics area. Dooleys! Mullins! Dooleys! Quadsies! <laughs> Mullins got hung Pro up cop. by Procop, yeah, so Rob got back by. Now Mullins trying to go back by Rob as him and Procop are side by side. Oh, pass for the lead. Oh. For Zaka goes back around Fjeldberg. Fjeldberg up front. Three prime design graphics runners in the air at the <laughs> same time. Three wide down into the new S turn. Rob gets extremely sideways. Mullins works on Pro Cop. Rob's going to try to go around both of them. Into the leap for the first time for the leaders. Oh, Here Mullins is for down. Zaka. For Zaka, Fjeldberg. Oh, Fjeldberg up front is a thing of beauty right now. Prokop sideways as ever in front of August Sanders, the colonel. Kunitz, Fresquez, and Mullins hooked up together with Kyle Robb on the track. Oh, I'm feeling this is going to be a good moto right now, boys. Heck yeah, Fjeldberg oh, just... Oh, how he didn't hit Mullins there, I will never know. Just saw Fjeldberg made a, a really good save in second. As Mullins and Fresquez are linked up here, just inside of the top ten, so this is uh, good news a for the championship. Working crazy outside right there. Yeah, Doesn't didn't lose, lose a lot of time. time. Maybe lost a little in that left hander because he didn't have the angle for it, but not much. Oh my goodness! Whoa! Units is wondering what the hell he got himself <laughs> into right now with Fresquez and Mullins right behind him. Two of the top five oh. greatest MX Simulator players Mullins. of all time. Right behind Are you Kunitz. Kidding me right now. I don't how know how. I don't know how they didn't make contact is the better question because it looked like they crossed lines at the exact same oh. time he made the pass. Mullins now goes around Kunitz, shuts the door to the inside. Still, he is on a mission. We saw it at the end of last race with a 205 lap time. By the way, that was our fast qualifying time. Was a 205. Wow. Don't we don't see that in races very often. Now he's on the Colonel August Sanders with a good run going here early, early in the moto. Big story, though, Zach Prokop rode a two-stroke in moto one, jumps on the 450 up in the top five. We're only on lap two, of course, but still. And now Prokop grenades himself. There goes the Colonel on by. <laughs> Mullins looks for an opening around Sanders, who's notorious for riding a wide bike and being tough to pass. Uh-oh, change for second about to come as Holm has a drive and gets around Fjellberg. Fjellberg... Looks like he's out of shape here. Cannot seem to wrangle that ever good machine oh, underneath of him, but he's still throwing sauce. Mullins down, not off the bike. Tried to muscle his way around Sanders, and Fresquez goes back around Mullins. Meanwhile, Round Sanders 
Might get Fjellberg here. Sanders and Fjellberg linking up as Fresquez and Mullins now lurk in the background. And we gotta watch Fjellberg on the leap one more time anyways, right? Yeah, we do. Sanders is right there, but he's not gonna get much done here. Oh, oh man. Welcome back to RF Racing Competition. And your point. And Mullins yeah. A championship duelies, really. So we got two of the greatest MX Simulator players of all time and the absolute lowest UID you can have other than actually making the game, all battling it out on the track. This is uh, OG Heaven here right now. August, one of those guys, that he gets a start every now and again. He can run up front. He's been around for a long time and you watch some of his videos, he can do some of the most crazy stuff in the game. Like He's got some talent, obviously knows it inside and out, playing it as long as he has, as holy crap, him and Fieldberg both are throwing it dirty. Yeah. Everyone's pretty much throwing it dirty at this point. I was impressed with how much lower Fresca has stayed on that jump, though, than Sanders and got the power back down to the ground as Sanders sends it down into the off-camber, though. Somehow is able to keep his adept 2018 Zook underneath of him as Mullins is looking at an outside move on Fresquez. Can't quite get it done. Sanders, I said he kind of rides a wide bike. I didn't mean that as an offensive thing, but he's proven it right now. Two of the best guys in the game can't get around him. And now Sanders oh. goes down, so they're going to go by finally. But they've proven they can run a much faster pace. Whoa, look, look at, at that line from Mullins. Again putting on a clinic to Fresquez twice with some ridiculous passes. I think Fresquez is tired of it now, though. I think he's going to try to figure out a way to get back by. They both funnel this inside line here. Mullins has a better drive, but I don't know. Fresquez got it clean, too. Both using that inside there. Mullins Technical just looks better in the into, corners. And they make it look easy. Yep, so now they're going to set sail after the uh, 2014 250 Outdoor National Champion, Dennis Fjellberg. See if they can't get back by him. All this is going on while Adam Holm is leading the race at the moment. Frizaka is into the two ride. Uh, for Zaka, third. Frizaka must have coughed up the lead while we were watching that crazy battle between Sanders, Fresquez, and Mullins because he was in front of Holm. Now in second, Fjellberg feeling the pressure already from Mullins and Fresquez coming from behind. Mullins actually starting to drop Fresquez a little bit. Has a little bit of a gap opened up over him. <coughs> That's he, of course, trying to regroup some of those points that he lost in moto number one. He's doing what he needs to do. He has Tyson behind him, and he's pulling from him. He's it's up to three seconds, and it was not long ago that he was behind him. And duly. Yeah, I'd be curious to see how hard uh, Fjellberg fights for the position here. Obviously, doesn't like to lay over, but I'm not too sure if he's one to get in the middle of a championship fight. This is the best performance he's had at all this season. He's definitely been struggling, so... I don't think he's just going to want to, you know, he's guys won championships. He has a single digit number. He believes he can run with anyone, I would think, too, though. Right. Some might wonder, we see the number one on track right now. We also see the number three on track right now. So who is and where is the number two? Uh, Byron Downen. I don't think we've actually seen him at all this year, Chris, if I'm not mistaken. He might be in uh, danger. I think he showed up to one Supercross, I believe. Well, regardless, he might Maybe be in danger. Maybe our pit reporter can check into that, see if how many points he scored in Supercross. I know we haven't seen him outdoors. Yeah. But yes, he could be in danger of losing that number two. <coughs> Oh my whips for days. They are catching for Zaka at an alarming rate as Fjellberg has had to up his pace with Mullins closing on to his rear fender here. See what happens before the leap. They're all going to funnel into that middle rut. See some whips. Fjellberg's not scared to throw it. He's going to come up a little short. Mullins throws it way further. Fjellberg is almost ridiculous. Almost his back wheel. Now we got a three rider oh, battle Mullins for second. Oh, the contact! Mullins is gonna How did Mullins it, save that? Are you serious? Not only did he save it, but he had a lot of time to for it to go really bad floating through the air. 
firing wow. down and firing down and rescue. Oh, Mullins is off the bike. Bryson Resquez right to him stays what? on the bike, but he's going to be right with Mullins as they get going. What the hell was that, Tyson? Hey, check out who's right behind those guys. Our moto number one winner, Bryce Whelan. He has come it. from way back in the pack. Yeah, we Say got an update hello, from our pit, pit reporter, Larry Londar. What have you got for us? Uh, Byron Downer did two, race two Supercross races this year. He got 14th in this. Uh, 21st place at both of them. All right, so he has not scored enough points to maintain that number two this year. We'll see if he shows up for any of these races while this battle continues on between three of the best riders this game has ever seen, uh, respectively voted sixth, fifth, and first on the racetrack of the greatest riders of all time. And then the guy reeling him in right now, our Moto One winner, wheeling. Yeah. So this might arguably be the most talented group of riders on the track in this particular moto, all locked together in a battle. They're a long ways off of our current leader, Adam Holm, though. We've seen Holm in this position prior at high point. Wasn't able to seal the deal. Can he do it this time? I'm sure he really badly wants this one. This is exactly what I thought would happen with Fjellberg and Mullins, though. Curious to see whether Fjellberg would lay over for Mullins, and he obviously hasn't, but it's kind of slowed the pace of Mullins down just a little bit. He's kind of fallen back into the clutches of these other guys. Seems like they're getting a little bit away now, but beforehand they were all locked together because of the pace being slowed down just a little bit by Fjellberg as Fresquez has wheeling all over his back door here. I think Jesse's wanting to ride behind him just so they keep throwing dualies together. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly are making tons of inroads on the two race leaders, Adam Holm and Kevin Frazaka. Holm just ran his fastest lap of the race, 209.8 last time around. Frazaka, 213, 210 for Fieldberg, and of course Mullins had that fall off, so 218 for him. Wheelins climbed up to the back door of Fresca, putting all kinds of pressure on him. As they go off the red bud drop, past the mechanics area. Wheelin trying to reel in an overall win here. Yeah, I think he's looking pretty good for it too because of how mixed up these results are going to be. Of course, Fresquez had that second in moto number one. That's the guy right in front of Wheelin that's in his sights that he's run down from a long ways back. Wheelin oh. getting some nice sauce over that jump. Oh, he's going to go off track, saves it. Shortcut. Mullins. Mullins just got Fresquez. Fieldberg. Or yep. <laughs> Fieldberg. One of the Fs. User disconnected from your channel. And now he's got Frizaka not too far in front of him. I believe that was James Armstrong that they're putting a lap down, not having a night that he wants. Meanwhile, you know, Adam Holm is actually stretching out this lead just a little bit. We are not yet halfway, so still a lot of time. Still left on the clock here for these guys to inch their way up to home. Oh man, I can't tell who that was for the versus Holdsworth's PC team. Clip. Yeah, Holdsworth <laughs> getting all sorts oh, of. Mullins oh, Mullins down. is down. Yeah, Mullins down on the inside. Fresca's so Fresquez goes, goes through. Wheelan's going by. So it's kind of the story of the first moto. Mullins works his way around those guys and then falls down and has to do it all over <laughs> again. This time he's just a little further to the front of the pack doing it. Exactly. That was not Armstrong a lap down, by the way. Must have been Tyler Fry. As Armstrong runs in the eighth spot, by the way, I was misspoken. Yeah, I'd have to imagine it's Fry. I don't think there's another Volcom rider in the race right now. Ooh, let's do this top ten rundown a little early while I think Fresquez is reeling in Fieldberg, and I don't want to miss that when he gets there. Out at the front of the field for the MotoOption.com Top 10 Rundown, Adam Holm leads the way. Team Architect, can he get his first career RF Pro win? He's trying hard. He almost got it done a few weeks ago. Kevin Ferzaka, BPC Husqvarna, runs in the number two spot. Solid right here for the 61 machine. That BPC Husqvarna team gelling pretty well with Blakely and Ferzaka putting in some great performances. 
The Eldberg is three on the bike and third in the race, riding forever good and getting saucy. I could call that out before I even hit the jump because it's Fieldberg. You know it's going to happen. <laughs> So nice to see Fieldberg out here mixing it up at the front of the field where I feel like he belongs all the time, anytime he lines up. Tyson Fresquez, Team Volcom, sketchy as ever, over the bars, down, and Whelan's going to go by, and I believe that's going to give Whelan the overall probably as the way they run right now. With a 1-4, I think that'd be enough to get it done. Well, I'm trying to think where did Holm finish in the first moto, though. Wasn't he fourth as well? I will uh, have to look because Larry Londard, our pit reporter, did check out for the evening. Fifth place is Fresquez. Haley runs in sixth. Mullins charging back in seventh all over Jack Haley at the moment. Armstrong eighth. Blakely ninth. And rounding out the top ten versus PC Fam and Max Ryder. This time at least running red. So maybe still being German. Maybe going partially American race carlin that's been your motooption.com top 10 rundown as mullins has made his way around haley and now is making his way around fresca's muscles his way to the inside down the rollers mullins back up into the top five once again all right and i'm going to look up motor one results while you take away kellen no problem taking a look at holm who Continues to lead here. He's got a nice gap over for Zaka. And, and the way things are with Fresquez and Mullins continuing to struggle as Fjellberg is somehow still on the bike. But there goes Whelan by in a third. So I believe that should actually solidify his overall. Yeah, Holm was sixth in moto number okay. one. So Whelan already has a pretty good lock on the overall. As is Whelan, Fresquez, Rob Stanley in moto number one. And, of yeah. course, he's been battling with Fresquez. Rob was on the – I don't even think he was in the top ten. So – Our versus PC.com one to watch. Alex Heckman has disconnected. Oh, no. So the curse returns. It worked three of the four motos this week, Chris. You know what it was? You gave it to Eli to call it this time. Yep. I should have stayed on it. Kyle Robb has made his way into the top ten right now. So he was third in moto one. But, yeah, Wheeling's sitting pretty for an overall win. Very interesting to see Whelan performing so well here. He's coming out, showing what he's made of, obviously has the speed. Uh, as Mullins works his way around a lapped rider, Fresquez is trying to stay in touch with Mullins this time. And we're not giving a lot of love to Holm, who might win his first moto, but also Kevin for Zach a second. So good, and he was good in Tennessee last week as well. Got overshadowed a little bit by his teammate Blakely, but Back, oh, Whelan with the mistake. Fieldberg, where did Whelan go in my timing? He does He's lose right the spot there, to yeah. Fieldberg. Fieldberg is practically facing the wrong direction. <laughs> uh, I was actually talking to him a little bit earlier, and I was like, if you whip it backwards on a jump and collide with another rider, is that a penalty for going backwards on the track? <laughs> 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 so. Oh, uh, that's funny. Uh, wow, so this is... I mean, we still have a little time to go, of course, but we might be looking at the first time that I can remember in a long time as Whelan gets back around Fjellberg. We're going to have back-to-back -back first time winners in the 450 class outdoors. I, I can't remember the last time that happened. Yeah, it's definitely not over yet. Fjellberg and Mullins continue to throw duelies. And Fjellberg destroys himself in the sand, so Mullins is going to go by. There's Armstrong, Haley, Blakely. Man, Fjellberg and that's... Where's Fresquez? Uh, oh, right behind, yeah. Fjellberg and that sand yeah. section have not been friendly all night long. He's had a couple really close calls and finally another crash there. He's going to work on Armstrong. 33 versus 3. There might be something to this being the second moto. Also, Fjellberg might be a little bit more awake than moto number 1. Yeah, that's very true. It's now about 6 a.m. in Norway. See if we can see some more duelies on the race. Tech, triple step up. And Armstrong just does that little front end tuck. Fieldberg never disappoints. Never. Always amazing. 
Meanwhile, we got another hookup between Whelan and Mullins possibly brewing here. Mullins is starting to lay down some good times again. 2074 fast lap. Woohoo! Go on board with him once again. I mean, keep in mind, in moto number one, the guys were ripping 209s and we thought they were faster than Mullins just rips a 205 on the last <laughs> four seconds different. Right. So a 207 is ridiculous enough, not to mention he was two seconds faster on the last lap of the first moto. Oh, he's oh. over the bars. What? Day's on the bike that time. I but guess I'm, who's right back with him again? The 21 yeah. of Frescas. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I was on board with him right there. I saw... The underside of the Red Bull Redbud soil, and yet somehow he physics. did a full flip, a full front flip in the turn. Yep. But you know physics. I slide out in a corner. My head doesn't touch the ground. Insta fall off. Jesse Mullins front flips oh, in a corner. Oh, Zach is down in second. Good to go. That's gonna open the door for Bryce Whelan to move into the two spot. Here comes this battle of Mullins and Fresquez. They're gonna, They're gonna get be to right him. on the back yeah. door. Just as as uh, for Zach was able to get going, took him a little bit to get going because of that sand section there before the finish. Two eleven with a front flip and a turn for Mullins. <laughs> Jesus. And a lap rider down there. They're gonna go ahead and get on by. I believe that's Hunter Dysher. Yeah, I think even without the front flip, I would probably never be able to run that lap time. I don't even have to say probably. I know I can't. <laughs> I built it. I'm trying to give myself the benefit of the doubt. I mean, I haven't been racing for three months now, but still. Oh, duallys. Yeah, and Mullen stayed way lower, and he's going to get the inside line on for Zaka. Fresquez is trying to follow suit. Just every move that Mullins makes, Fresquez wants another piece of it. Oh, Mullins hops over a couple ruts oh. for Zaka, gets the spot back. Right of the needle like a grandma in the nursing home right there. Yes, he did. He's going to knit you a nice sweater because of that one. Oh, my duallys again. It's just all over the place. I think I'd be dead by now. <laughs> You'd be too bottled. <laughs> Mullen's looking Mullen's inside on Frazaka. Yeah, he's going to get it. Frazaka, woo! Chopped the line. Oh, uh, some duallys yeah, again. Just again. Man, this next rider down in the turn. That was Whelan. Wow, so Whelan. For Zeka, missed a timing gate, too, because the cameras took a second to update. So here comes Fresquez. Whelan's back to fifth now. And he has that bonus point, so he has to finish right behind Fresquez for this overall. That's the key. I was just about to say, we're so spoiled this week by Dooley's that it's really actually going to be kind of sad next week to go to Southwick, where there's not many jumps. No, there is not. There might be, actually, there's a table on there that I think duallys will be possible, maybe two of them, and a scrub finish line jump. So, new Southwick coming as well, so pretty much brand new. About as new as Redbud is. Heck yeah. For those of you watching wondering. All right, we 50 are... 50 plus hours into the terrain already on Southwick. <laughs> so, and it oh, keeps on going. Bolins is down in second, and guess who's going to be right behind him once again for Zaka, Zaka Frescas, and Whelan. Yep. You know how... Two minutes in. Adam Holm has a very comfortable lead to work with right here. I mean, it was close at high point. He He's going to lose this one himself if he loses this moto. So, obviously, we still have... Mm, seven minutes and two laps to go, but I just don't see it falling apart for him here. I'm not saying anything because I don't want to jinx the <laughs> poor guy. I really want to see him get his first win. He's been such a contender this outdoor season. I'm hey, so happy for him. And Whelan just went down again. Armstrong is going to be closing up soon. Overalls are about to be really flipped on their head because if Fresquez and can make enough just spots got up. for Zaka. So. Yeah, so Fresquez might have a chance at the overall here. But meanwhile, Adam Holm on a 6-1, I think, might be in a position to take the overall as well if perhaps... Whelan loses another spot. I don't know. This is all flippity flopped up here. It'd be really close, that's for sure. But boy, when was the last time you saw 6 1 taken overall?
Fresquez just has Frazaka bearing down on him. Armstrong has gotten wheeling. They throw Dooley's on the Murica table into the sand section and Armstrong gets a little bit of a gap as Whelan made a mistake coming in they're getting around the 164 machine through the rollers as they run right now Fresquez would have 42 points and take the overall Whelan is off the bike again so risking losing another spot to Jack Haley and he does that he was tied with Tyson on 40 points before losing that spot because a 1-6 is worth 40 points so Yes, Holm could win this overall, but he's going to need some help from Fresquez. He needs Fresquez to drop a spot. Ah, uh, yeah, that's... I mean, I suppose it's possible. Fresquez, Frazaka, kind of close. His teammate Armstrong a little further back of that, but... I mean, we got five minutes to go. I feel like Fresquez is more focusing on what's going on in front of him than anything behind him, though. Now, Fieldberg has closed in on Whelan. I think the X factor right now are going to be for Zaka and Armstrong who just made a mistake and can they stay in front of Whelan I think is the best opportunity to really shake things up. Yeah, Whelan lost a lot of time to Armstrong because that crash. Fjellberg getting into the mix once again. Nice for Fjellberg late in the race, still battling well inside the top 10, having a much better performance than we've seen all year. Still getting saucy. I'm guessing that the jumps here on Redbud's track helped keep him a little loose too, just throwing big whips and whatnot. Yeah. First track all year, well, at least in a, in a couple weeks that we've had so many of these jumps to have a, an opportunity to get upside down on. And I think you're right. I think Fjellberg looks the most comfortable we've seen him all year long. Haley and Blakely hooked up in the eight and nine spots in a battle. Brady Stanley currently running out your top ten. Race Carlin, Kyle Robb back here, Roy Mitchell, Dylan Copeland, Devin Davis is going to make it through this whole moto after DNFing the first one. August Sanders not a very good second moto. Trevor Doiron is in the points as he gets lapped by Adam Holm. Reed Young. And Billy Kunitz is also in the points. Oh, first yeah. ever pro race. Just got an A license like, during the 250 race. Signed him up. <laughs> so, by the way, this thing is not over. Holmes' lead was 25 seconds down to 16. He ran a 212. Mullins ran a 208.5. It is not over. Whew, just saw Whelan trying to get back around Armstrong as a lapter, lapper is in the way. Whelan had the pass made, but Case the leap He's and then it gets it back as he swoops around the outside of Armstrong. One more spot, or Mullins catching home. Oh, wait, no, because Frescas would still get it. The so Whelan, 12 seconds back. He ran a 207.3 last time around. Wow. Whelan is Stanley steamering it up. He knows he has to go. He has to get up around for Zaka. Get the overall here at Redbud. Wait, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was... Math can be hard. Especially when well, it's, it's this close. I was going to say, it's not like we're doing three ones and one twos yeah. and two twos and stuff like that. So Adam Holm is at risk. He's got lappers to deal with. He's also got the pressure of winning his first ever race. Does he pick up the pace because he sees the lead shrinking? What does he do? He is going to have, no question about it, three oh, laps Mullins to go next time Oh, hung up by a big group of lappers here. He's going to go around the inside and make a move. I believe that's Fowler. Home Goes coming right to around three the 489 laps to go. Yeah, lappers everywhere. This, and, and these are also lappers that are battling four points-paying positions as well. These guys are lapping inside of the top 20 now. Fourteen seconds is the gap. See what Mullins' lap time is this time around. 2088, 211 for Holm. That was three more seconds off his lead. We still have a. We're gonna get. Let's see. 
the minute left before 30 minutes, so it'll be two laps next time around. Yeah, it's three, three laps Three to go. go. Four home, so... Here comes Whelan creeping up to Frizaka. I don't know about creeping. He is on a mission. He has closed that gap fast. I believe Frizaka actually made a mistake. 2.19 lap time, 2.07.3. Fastest lap of the race for Whelan. He smells the overall right in front of him on, in the form of a number 61. On board with Bryce Whelan, down past the mechanics area, off the ski drop off. Sideways as ever. <laughs> Just an update the leads down to 13 seconds. Oh, Whelan's down. Front row. They have time. With two to go to mount one more attack on Frizaka. I don't know. He lost a lot of time in that crash. Mullins is laying down heaters. Trying oh, to catch home down. down in the run. That's uh -oh. gonna, I was going to say, if he could keep it at three seconds, he would be fine if he was losing only three a lap, which I know it sounds ridiculous losing three seconds a lap only, but it's down to eight seconds now. Two to go. He's running out of wiggle room here. Yeah, Holm has got to be on it these last couple laps. Now is when the pressure sets in. You talked a little bit about the pressure of winning his first race. I don't think he would have felt it when he had a lead comfortable enough to give up a fall-off crash. But now that it's within that range and coming to the two-lap board right now, I'm sure that it's nothing but a bundle of nerves inside of that young man's hands right now. 207.6 for Mullins that time around. Just chipping away at it really fast. 213.6. That tells the story. Six seconds out of the lead, last lap around. There's two to go in the race. Time has expired. The real question, I think, lies with whether or not Holm is going to make another mistake, though, because I don't see just on speed Mullins getting there just yet. I think another small mistake or two from Holm could happen but eight seconds is a lot in a lap and a half yeah it's tough there's other riders on the track too it's not just hot lapping by yourself and he's got to deal with lappers that he's approaching at a rapid speed because home is laying it down he's going fast and oh again, he's off the bike oh Over no jumps the red bud table He's going to get going right when Mullins gets here, I believe. Mullins going to yeah, go Mullins on by on the for outside. the lead. So Got Holm, a lapper holding him up a little bit. Holm so. finds himself in the exact same position he was in at high point, where, again, he has to deal with Mullins and maybe getting to him for his first win. Well, where does this put Mullins overall now? Mullins was 8-1. Eight, eight, yeah, 8-1, eight, eight, so. So he's still out. Whelan was caught to Frazaka again and went down again. Wow. Every time he gets there. And I was actually going to say about Mullins, how many times have we seen him go around a bunch of guys and fall down? He is not off to the races with the win here by any means. Right. As they run right now, Tyson Fresquez would be your overall winner. With a 3-3? Three, 2-3 three? Three would win the overall. But Mullins limiting the damage with an 8-1. And a saucy whip to go on top of that. Holm is laying it down, trying to keep the pressure on, do what he can. Mullins White has flag, a lapper. lappers. Oh, Nelly. White flag is out. Holm is going to give it every little bit of effort that he can muster together here. Because boy, oh boy, does he want to win one of these things. And he is so mad he just threw it away. And it's just going to go bad to worse unless he figures it out here. Yeah, he's got 20 seconds behind him to play with, and I don't think that even matters. I think if he only had a two-second lead behind him, he would be pinning it, trying to just win this thing, get that monkey off of his back. How unfortunate. Had it going for him, a couple mistakes, and a fall-off crash later. And obviously the guy who's been pretty much the fastest guy all night long... Might actually end up winning a moto here, so solid performance from Mullins, but you gotta feel for Holm in this one. 
Yeah, the wheels have completely come off the 67 machine. He's dropped back to seventh now, back behind Haley and Fieldberg as well with another fall off. So 229 lap time, four wheeling. His overall chances are now bye-bye, bye-bye. <laughs> it's still not over, but it's going to take a crash from Mullins, which has just not happened in the second half of this race yet. And salvaging, oh. oh, that was close. Salvaging the day is why he has that number one plate on his bike. 39th to 8th in moto number one with a bunch of fall-offs, a bunch of fall-offs in moto number two, but a great second half of the moto to potentially take home the win if he can just hang on through the new S turn. I'm guaranteed we're going to see a big old whip over the leap. Yeah, if he's going to crash from here, one. I feel like it's going to be in that sand section before the finish, but that would be... A big or stretch from too here. Big of a whip. Yeah, I don't know. I throws a whip though, brings it back smooth through the sand section one more time. A little bit easier than other people for sure. But how about it? Jesse Mullins perseveres and wins 450 Moto 2 here at Redbud. Adam Holm is kicking himself tenfold. Ran the fastest lap of his race on the last lap, trying to get to him, but it still was not enough. Tyson Fresquez, meanwhile is looking to go 3-3 three, three to two, win three. the overall, or 2-3 rather, sorry, to win the overall today. So good on Fresquez gaining the most points that he could. Obviously it would have been better if he could have beaten Mullins in that second moto for his sake. Nice boner air from Kevin from Zaka. Chiefs 3000 grabbing the fourth place finish. Great ride here for the BPC Husqvarna rider. Jack Haley going to come across in fifth. A good motive here for him. Relax the tire. Number 26. Nice whip over the leap. Little super cross whip. Dennis Fieldberg. One more for us, bud. Team ever good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sixth, seventh. Chase Blakely. Straight air Leclerc. He's battling with wheel into the line. Wheel into Oh, my gosh. Almost contact. This is actually wow. for the overall podium. Woo! And Whelan gets it until cuts are in. 0-0 zero, zero zero on wow. the pit board of Blakely. Check that out. Interval point zero two three. Armstrong was a lap down in ninth. Is that correct? No. Hey, I have him in uh, oh. lap 16. Okay. And then Stanley. Kyle Robb's going to come across in 11th. Roy Mitchell and Race Carlin going to be battling here in the, the new S turn. Let's watch this one go yeah. to the finish. Mitchell looks like he's going to try to fight back. Oh, almost a mistake there, though. Carlin looks like he's going to have this one under wraps, barring a mistake on the leap. Uh, he he mistaken clean. mistake trying to throw his oppo whip. Oh, he, he goes down. Wow. So Mitchell's going to get the you. spot. Yeah. Going to pick up 12th. Carlin looks like he's got 13th on lock as 14th. Dylan Copeland finished. Simos, Reed Young, August Sanders, Trevor Doyron, Logan Leitzel, and Billy Kunitz scores a point in his first ever pro national in the 450 class. So we'll wait on Carlin to finish and see cuts. No change. So Mullins takes the win in 450 moto number two. Fresquez takes the overall win. And that's going to do it for us at Redbud. Chris, any final thoughts? I just want to thank our fine folks that bring us this series. Ride365.com, Nationals powered by VersusPC.com. Of course, Moto Option, Tagger Designs, Race Tech, FamMX.com, Bentley Graphics, SYS TV, Moto Chasing, MX Simulator, and Two Wheelers Graphics. Of course, log on to tm-factory-racing.com and also the fine folks at mxslobby.com all supporting us to help run these races week in and week out. Thank you for another night of racing. Thanks for streaming with me, Kellen. Awesome. Yes, absolutely. It was another awesome night of racing right here from Redbud. Hope you guys enjoyed the stream. If you did, Please go ahead and follow us on YouTube and, of course, on Twitch as well to keep up with all of our updates. And uh, we hope to see you guys at the next round here at Southwick one week's time later on. And uh, for Chris Riesenberg and Kellen Brower here on Star Your Systems TV, we're out so long from Redbud.